Hello and welcome to Dev Chatter. Sorry about the delay today, guys. I had a few things I needed to set up. Uh, I had a little bit of a uh, late start uh, later than I wanted to. Uh, hopefully, everybody is having a good Saturday so far. Uh, for some of us, it's early afternoon. For uh, some people, it might be evening by now. Uh, not sure where everybody's located, but I am glad that you made it. So, um, the point that I want to start on, uh, for any of you that were paying attention uh, on Twitter to anything I sent out, uh, the plan for today is to work on a soundboard for uh, Twitch streamers. So here, for example, uh, I want to make it so that we could click uh, any given key on our keyboard, uh, different shortcuts, and make it so that um, you know different audio clips play. So if you've watched any video game streamers and things like that, it's pretty common for those guys to click a few buttons on their keyboard, or some of them are running, uh, say, an Elgato uh, board, which is basically they have a separate keyboard of icons that they can click for different sound effects. Uh, so it's just a fun little thing. And I like it as a project for us because uh, we've got two projects that we're going to have going here. The first one is the one that we were working on earlier this week. Um, so we worked on that for two days this week. And the pieces we were doing were a Twitch chat bot. Uh, now I say Twitch chat bot only because that's the service it's currently connecting to. Obviously we're planning on connecting it to other uh, chat channels as well. Um, so that's where we're going with that one. The bot itself we set up as uh, a pretty simple uh, .NET Core project using C Sharp and we have it set up so that uh, it's essentially right now just sending out messages uh, on a periodic basis. So it waits until it's time to send and sends out messages to all of the connected services that it's using. Uh, today that includes both its own console as well as sending out to Twitch, uh, but our intention is to connect that to, say, Mixer's chat as well as to uh, Discord, uh, probably YouTube, anything else that we can come up with that we're able to connect the bot to. So that is our plan for now. Uh, we're likely going to build in commands and other fun features to that bot, uh, but that's just what we're going to be doing over time. So, as our second project that I wanted to work on here at DevChatter, uh, I wanted to do uh, something that was a little different uh, and a little bit more fun. So, not, not that the other one wasn't, isn't fun, because it is. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a good amount of excitement when we actually got it to send our first messages to Twitch. Uh, but what I'm talking about is I want this to be a soundboard that we can use to play... Uh, probably to start, we'll just use MP3 files. Uh, I've grabbed a set of MP3 files just off the internet, clips of random stuff. Uh, likely not going to commit those to the project, just because uh, some of them we don't really own the licenses to. And we could probably play them here on the stream uh, as we're testing things, but I don't want to be distributing those files. So we're not going to commit the MP3 files that we use in this project. So, um, uh, since we're not planning on working on the bot today, uh, I am not going to give you guys an update on the changes that uh, we did to our Twitch chat bot. Uh, I did a few small changes to the bot uh, since our last stream. Uh, they're the ones that I talked about doing at the end of the stream, so if you were there, know that those changes have gone in, and uh, then... Uh, we will continue working on those, uh, and I will show them uh, probably on uh, either Monday or Tuesday, depending on how far we get uh, in the soundboard today. So let's go ahead and give an intro to what we are doing on the soundboard. So uh, I mentioned a couple of things. First off, we want to be able to play MP3 files, so my plan for that one is to uh, probably use the... Um, I believe we can get access to the Windows Media Player uh, libraries. 
uh, from inside of .NET and use those to play MP3 files. So my plan is to attempt to use that. Uh, I want this to be a system tray only tool so that there's no window that you have to keep up. Because uh, if you've done any uh, streaming before, you know that there's usually an entire monitor is reserved just to the content that you're streaming. So I have a monitor that is dedicated to that. Uh, I then need to take up a pretty good amount of space for uh, the streaming software that actually does my stream. Uh, I might also have my bot running and any other various resources I need. So screen real estate is a real premium here. So hence have it just minimized down to the system tray and be out of the way. Uh, my next plan is you say, well, hang on, you need to configure that. So I want to have that be a context menu and we'll bring up the context menu and probably have that bring up a dialog box. So context menu, you know, right click, say, hey, configure or something like that and bring it up. Uh, might also put some other things in the context menu. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Um, so that brings up the next question. So if we're going to reference this, uh, we're going to use the Windows Media Player library in order to play our audio. Um, how are we going to get it into the system tray and what kind of application are we going to use? So I went back and forth on this a little bit. Um, for those of you that aren't uh, currently building any Windows applications uh, anymore, uh, most of us aren't. I do most of my stuff on the web anymore. So primarily ASP.NET Core at this point, uh, for at least my backend server technology. Um, you know, whether you're running it on Docker or whether you actually have it on, you know, running directly on Windows, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, but the point is, most of us are writing web apps right now. Um, even internal applications are usually web applications. Uh, but this one, since I'm going to be doing keyboard shortcuts and the like, I thought it would be good to do an actual Windows application. So that brings up the important question. Uh, what type of application should I build? Uh, is it something that should be a WinForms application, a WPF application, or should it be one of the uh, Universal Windows uh, applications, the UWPs? And... Um, so for the latter, the real advantage with doing one of those uh, over, say, WPF, is that it could go somewhere else like, say, Xbox or, you know, uh, some other platform. Um, however, uh, I don't think we're likely to do that for streaming. I don't think that, like, obviously the keyboard shortcut idea, I don't think someone running uh, streaming on their Xbox is really going to take advantage of our tools so I don't see a lot of value in there so that leaves us pretty much with WPF and WinForms. That brings up two questions. So the first question is um, is there a performance difference? Uh, the second one which one's going to be better for giving us our user interface and which one's going to be easier to develop against? Now not that like ease of development is a huge thing this isn't exactly a project where the budget's a big concern because we can pretty much do whatever we want on the channel uh, however, um, there are uh, some differences for what we pick. Uh, obviously, if we want the nicest user interface and want the most control over it, we're going to use WPF. Uh, however, I so I set this project up. Right now, we actually have a WPF app and a WinForms app in here. Um, I find it kind of funny because a lot of people will tell you, you know, hey, WinForms is dead. But uh, if you talk to Microsoft, they will tell you it is absolutely not dead, and people are still using it, and I do think it is a good choice here. Now let me explain why. Uh, WinForms applications tend to have a little bit faster startup than a WPF application, and uh, we also want to have a slightly smaller footprint. So by running a WinForms application, uh, we can pretty much use the fewest amount of resources I expect. I'm not 100% on that, um, but the WinForms application should be lighter weight and thus use fewer resources when we're already dedicating things to, for example, uh, getting rid of everything around me uh, on a green screen here. So the system resources are used for that. They're also used for sending this whole big image that you've got all around here and um, 
getting all of that content sent out to you. So there's a decent amount of work. Obviously, I'm running Visual Studio, and uh, the gamers, for example, are running whatever game it is they're running. Uh, if you have a second computer, no big deal, but this approach, I think, is a nice one. We're going to use few resources, and I'm hoping that it's going to be pretty easy. Keep in mind that there is no main UI, so when you start this application, I want it just to go immediately to the system tray and be out of the way. So, let's go ahead and take a look at what I set up so far. So, I set us up with three projects in here. Uh, the first project is the WinForms project that I mentioned. Uh, there's also a core project where we'll put all of our general uh, code to deal with, you know, whatever we need to do for the soundboard. We'll put it in here if it doesn't have any dependencies on anything else. Uh, and the last project is our unit test project. Now in this one, just to confirm that everything is working, uh, I put our little canary test in here that is going to let us know that things are actually running as we expect them to. So our unit tests execute and do what we think they should do. Uh, I know not an exhaustive test, but it gives us that confirmation. Okay, I did a couple of other things. I haven't actually tested these yet. Um, I don't know if I made it clear when I was uh, mentioning that we were going to do a system tray application. I've never done an application that's just a system tray icon before, so it'll be interesting because uh, I don't actually want it to load up an initial form. So you'll notice uh, from my basic Windows Forms uh, project, the one thing I did was delete Form 1. So that is actually gone. Um, and I removed its run from here. So uh, the next thing I did was I grabbed, I created a notify icon, which I believe is the class I need in order to get it to show up uh, in the system tray. And um, then I put a I put text on it. So I haven't run this yet, um, but I do want to see what happens when I do, because obviously I haven't tested this at all. So it could just be that it just crashes out on me immediately. Um, I haven't told it what icon to use for the program or anything like that. So um, I'm really not sure what to expect. So we'll see. Um, so I went ahead and started it, and uh, I do want to look around in my... Um, so I pulled up the processes on this computer, and I'm taking a look to see if it showed up anywhere. I don't see it. somewhere no no something else opened okay so I don't have a system tray icon for it yet uh, it did not appear let me go ahead and tell it to start in debug mode and we'll see what happens okay so it immediately closes interesting oh maybe it's because I don't actually run the application let me try running the application because I did remove that because uh, I didn't want to run it with a form, and it had one before. So maybe I just need to put that in. And that should tell it to go ahead and run and give me a process. Okay, I don't see its system tray icon, but I'm going to recheck for its process to be running. So let me take a quick look. Uh, I still don't see it. I expected it to be in there. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look at notify icon. Notif if I can type. Notify icon. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Bring it over onto the screen so everybody else can see what we're looking at. So, Notify icon, I believe, is uh, the Windows Forms class that I want to use. 
So let's take a look at what it does. Okay. So here in this, you'll see they're running it as part of the form. Which is interesting. Because I'm trying to not do mine in form. Because I don't want to have a form. Okay. Uh, can I pass in icon? Nope. Alright, let's take a look. So, are there any inheritors of this I could be using? Notify icon, events, properties. Okay, component mono, component. Notify icon. Okay. Specifies a component that creates an icon in the notification area. Yep, see? I want to put an icon in the notification area. Uh, gets or sets the current icon. Okay. Uh, maybe we need to give it an icon. So maybe instead of text, we should give it an icon. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and fix this name because I called it icon here, um, but I'm gonna, instead going to call it notify icon uh, because we're then going to set its icon property. Okay. So I need an icon file. Uh, and in order to do that, um, I just want to go grab one real quickly. Uh, which means I need a .ico file, right? Uh, let's see if I can just go grab an icon real quickly. Give me one second, guys, while I jump over into uh, the... Okay. Uh, I am going to open up the Dev Chatter logo and see if I can just save this thing as a .ico file and put it in that project. Uh, let's see. Can I save as an ICO? thing to Aiko. Choose a file. Alright, thank you thing. Random person on the internet, I'm going to send you a dev chatter uh, ping file. Okay. I'm going to send a different one. All right, there we go. Okay. Uh, now I want to, yes, I want it to be an ICO file. Um, I don't actually know what size I need. Um, so let me go ahead and take a look at what it got us. Uh, that actually looks like it'll work. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and open this up in File Explorer. Now that I have this, uh, let's take a look at all the files. There is our icon. Uh, devchatter.ico Whoops. Okay. 
So devchatter.ico, I am going to include that in the project, and I am going to set it as content that we will copy if newer. I don't know if it needs to be content that we copy if newer, but I'm going to do that just in case for now, because uh, I do want this to work quickly, and I think that's the most likely one to work. So this wants me to give it a file name, and I am just going to say devchatter.ico. So in theory now, um, when we run this, it should create a system tray icon. Again, I hope. Uh, we'll take a look. So it should be running. Um, and I don't see a devchatter.ico down there. All right, uh, let's figure out what else might be missing. Oh, there's a visible property. I'll make sure I set that uh, explicitly to true. Uh, visible. Don't know what the, detail, the uh, default is for that value, but let's go ahead and do that. Take a look. Okay, that was it. All right, so now I do have an icon. Um, and when I mouse over it, it says, can we see this? So looks like that works. So uh, if any of you are following along, let me know if you managed to get the same thing working. Uh, but that does seem to work nicely here. Um, okay. And yes, I know, I know, I'm not doing any uh, fancy .NET Core stuff for anybody that uh, wanted to see that. Tune in later on this week. We'll be back to .NET Core goodness, uh, which is what you and I are all much more familiar with nowadays. Uh, so it'll be a little easier, a little more fun. Um, I should say uh, a little bit less head banging against the wall trying to make this work. Uh, okay, so what that means is I can now get this application to run and I can get that text to be there. And uh, after I close this, uh, what happens is um, I should mention to you guys um, the icon, this process, it stays open. So I just ran this um, without debugging and the notification icon stays there. Now what's weird about that is um, right now I can't actually close it. It's kind of strange. Uh, and the reason why is that when I right click it there's no context menu. So just out the gate I can't just shut this thing down. Um, but when I run it uh, in debug mode, um, stopping it will obviously kill the process. So that works out nicely. Okay. Do do do. So that's kind of cool. Um, Let's see. Uh, okay, so I can find the task and kill it manually. Um, all right, so that worked. Um, not the way I expected it to, but hey, uh, not going to complain because I was able to shut it down. Um, so I just yanked up task manager and killed it. Okay, so next thing that I want to take a look at, because we can clearly get this to run as a system tray, uh, I want to figure out how to get it to close. So I think that means I need to give it a context menu, which I think is just a property on this thing. So let's go ahead and notify icon dot context menu. There it is. Okay, uh, equals new context menu. Hey, there we go. Okay, uh, so now that I have this, I could either add the menu items in now or later. So I think I'm going to add them later and say context menu, because it now we now should have one. Um, okay, so context menu, uh, menu items. Uh, this, I think. Uh, 
the question is, do does it need a new one or? Guess we'll find out. Uh, or is it one? Okay. We'll just do it this way then. So we're gonna say new menu item. Um, and for this menu item, uh, I want to put in exit. So we have a way to get out of the <laughs> get out of the system. Uh, so let's see. Uh, index. Uh, name. Exit. And then. Uh, Maybe I can't do that in here. All right, we'll do this. So we're gonna pull out the menu item. Menu item exit. There it is, okay. Apparently you can't wire this up there. Menu item exit on click. Okay. All right. So now that we're in this, we want to uh, go ahead and cause this uh, to exit the application. So uh, that's a good question. How do we kill the app then? Once we're in here. Um, uh, let me Google for that. Menu is okay. I can do that if I do, do, do. Let's see. Notify icon context menu exit. hilarious oh that's funny I was searching so I was searching for exit on the page uh, on the MSDN documentation for the notify icon and it is e ampersand XIT <laughs> oh that's pretty good all right so um Exit. Wonder if I can do that. Forms all message hunts that they must terminate and closes all application windows after the message has been processed. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Um, so I don't don't know if it'll work, but hey, 
let's go ahead and try it. Uh, and I'll just let you guys know if it works or not, because I don't have my system tray on the right screen, so sorry about that. Um, I will figure out how to do that for the next one of these. Hey! It works! Uh, hilariously, the text of it is not, because I said name is exit, and I think I meant text is exit. Yeah, I had to click on an empty item. I think this wants to localize, yes. It wants me to make that a resource. Um, which I'm not too worried about it right now. Um, I'm only supporting English at this point. So, if someone wants to set it up so that we have resources and can support multiple languages, I'd be all for that. Uh, go ahead and send a pull request. This will all be on GitHub. So, uh, let's go ahead and try running it again. And this time I should have an exit icon. I do. Cool. So, looks like I can use that to kill the application and it works out pretty nicely. Um, so, uh, we have that text, so I don't really care about the hover text anymore, so that was the text that showed up when we hovered over it. Um, at some point I want to fix up the dev chatter icon so that it's not just the dev chatter icon and maybe it's like a dev chatter icon with like a, a, a speaker over it or something like that, so it looks like you know, oh, that's the soundboard application. Uh, so I think that would be pretty cool. Um, let's see, so we have a context menu. The next thing I think I want to do is set it up so that our uh, context menu has um, another item, uh, say configure. Um, we don't have to actually have it do anything right now, but uh, I want to set it up because that is the next piece we're going to have. Menu, item, config. So I'm going to go ahead and create this one again. This one is going to be at index 1. Text is going to be configure. Alright, so that thing stops yelling at me. And then we are going to add this also to our collection here. So now we have two items in our menu. Uh, should be an exit item as well as a configure. Uh, I actually think I want to flip these. So the way this displayed, zero was actually the top item. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. So, hey, thanks for following. Uh, good to have you here. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and try this. So I flipped those. There's plenty of space right now. So if I want to switch them the other way, I can do that. Um, maybe index doesn't do what I think it does. I assumed I could use index to choose the ordering, but exit is still appearing above configure in my menu. Maybe it's the order I put it into the menu that makes the difference, not the actual uh, index value. Yep, that seems to be what makes the difference. So I'm going to stop even specifying the index since I'm not using it right now. Uh, once I figure out what index does, um, I might do that differently. So I mentioned to you guys that uh, we were digging into this. So let's go back to the notify class real quickly, the notify icon class. So. Uh, oh yeah, see, they set index also. I wonder what that does. Um, okay, so, yeah, see, in their notif in, in this uh, example, they use that to minimize and unminimize the window. Uh, but we don't want to do that. Ah, see, and they closed their form and then probably exited after that. Uh, but we're not doing that. Uh, let's see, notify context for notify example, visible, oh yeah, see, visible true. You got a visible true, the thing, as it turns out. Handle the double click event to activate the form. Uh, okay, well, cool. Um, what else is on here? I mentioned that those, uh, context menu, uh, menu items, we wanted to take a look at those. So this context menu, which, where is the link? 
I was expecting this to give me a link to the context menu um, menu items. Menu items, there we go. Because uh, I want to find out what that index property actually does on there. Because uh, it seems like it's not needed. So, menu item. Let's take a look. Index. Gets or sets a value indicating the position of the menu item in its parent menu. Huh. That sure seems like it should do what I think it should do. Uh, but maybe it bases that more on, maybe when you add range like that, it puts them in because you're adding in a set all at once. I don't know. Seems like that index should be what does it. Anyway. Um, I'm not going to worry about that one for now. So. Let's go ahead and do the next thing. So we have our configure. It doesn't do anything right now, but I think I want to tell people that. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, create another one of these. And uh, we should be able to, um, there was a balloon or something like that that we could get away with on here, wasn't there? Um, Let's, let's see if we can do that. Uh, hang on. Yeah, let's just put it in line right here. We're going to call this, yeah, sure, sender and args. And then I think I want curlies around this. So let's go ahead and say... Notify icon dot show balloon tip. There we go. Displays a balloon tip. Uh, in the task bar for a specified time period. This parameter is deprecated as Windows Vista notification times are based on the system accessibility settings. Okay. Okay, so what that means is that we don't, like, the timeout no longer matters, is how I interpret that. Uh, displays a balloon tip with a specified title, text, and icon. Um, so the title is, uh, you clicked this. Um, well, the title would be uh, configure menu and then the next thing is the text you clicked configure and we do we need an icon uh, we're gonna say none because I don't know what kind of notification that is It does not like the fact that I am accessing that because it will be, um, because we're inside of this using statement, it will have disappeared by that point. <clears throat> um, that makes me wonder, um, how I would otherwise get access to it. Because uh, if I do actually want to get it disposed like this, well, it, like, yeah, because it's definitely disposed of, and I can pull it out of the using. Um, let me take a look at the so we pulled this out. Let's take a look at the notify icon class. Again, let's look at their example. Did they put it inside of using or did they just make it? They just made it. It's an eye disposable though, so that freaks me out. Um, 
they're inside of a form that's also disposable. Yeah, components.dispose. I don't have a this. I don't have components because I'm not really running in a form. Hmm, that's a good question. Well, what I could do, um, let's see. Uh, let's see, egg, uh, exit, uh, on thread exception, thread exit, application exit, occurs when the application is about to shut down. Okay. I guess I'm going to very quickly get rid of that thing then. So... I know it's disposable, so instead of putting it here, I could save it as a field or something, and then we'd still have access to it. Okay. Um. All right, so let's switch this to a field. So, all right, so it's now a field. I don't need to use that anymore. I'm now going to access the field instead of the local variable. And then down here, I want to say, Dispose. And hopefully that does what I want it to when I want it to do it. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, so now my expectation is that when we click on this thing, we should see uh, a balloon that says that I clicked on the configure menu. And again, I think you're going to have to trust me on this one that it works. Uh, so... I now have it down here. I click on configure and it popped up a uh, little message over here. Um, so the notification center is actually where it put it. So if you're running Windows 10 then you know there's that uh, little section that you pop out and it shows it in there. It says the title is configure menu and it says you clicked configure. So looks like it does what I want it to. Uh, I am now going to exit, which I did, and it got rid of it. So the icon looks like it disappeared, so let's hope that it really did get rid of it. Um, okay, so we have that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and commit because uh, we got our context menu set up. Uh, the other thing that I want to do, I mentioned to you that there was a WPF app that I was also building in here. I'm going to go ahead and actually nuke that piece and commit the deletion of that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do though is commit what we did here. So this is setting up the context menu. Simple context menu. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and send that up. And then the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of the WPF uh, application that's actually still in there. Now that should be gone, and I'm going to commit the removal of that. Remove unused WPF application. Uh, so when I initially set up this basic thing, I hadn't made the decision of whether or not we were going to use WinForms or WPF. But I think this is going to be the easier approach. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, hopefully it's pretty easy to switch between them. Um, I'm intending most of this uh, data to be inside of the core project anyway, because when we do our configuration, I'm going to need to store this somewhere. So maybe it'll just be files for now. Um, I don't expect to want to have any, any kind of serious storage here. Obviously, we're not expecting a Twitch streamer to be running SQL Server or anything like that. And um, I also don't want to do anything like connecting out to the internet. 
uh, to do any other storage of anything like that either. Um, I don't want to have a back-end service, and part of that again is because the Twitch streamer is going to need their network connection. I don't want to be messing with it because they're already, uh, you know, probably bringing in a game and sending out. So they need all their resources for streaming, so I don't want to mess with it, say pulling in, uh, you know, the MP3 files or whatever it is they've got stored out there. Uh, I'd rather they have that locally. Okay, so we are all committed and ready to continue on. So the next thing that I want to take a look at is adding in the Windows Media Player library, because I mentioned that we should be able to use that. So for now, I'm going to make that reference uh, in a uh, probably a class library um, that I'm not sure exactly how specific I want to get with it, but I think the plan for now is I'm just going to make a single infrastructure project. Uh, for those of you that have uh, coded with me before, you probably know I like separating out what our dependencies are. Um, so actually, you know, I am going to do it. Um, no, we're gonna, no, we're keeping it like this. We're keeping it simple. We're keeping it simple. So I normally like to separate these out. So uh, I have an infrastructure project for, say, my dependency on, you know, media libraries, for example, uh, because I don't, I would like it if I can write my code such that most of it doesn't know about these media library dependencies that I've got. Um, and then I might also have a dependency on the file system for where we're storing our data. And yes, I am thinking we're going to need file system access because I think we're just going to have a folder full of the MP3s that they that they provide to us. So when they give us MP3s, we'll just put them in a folder in you know with the app. Uh, simple, I know, but uh, what I like about that is um, it makes it easy for their tools to interact with each other. So uh, we could get into a circumstance where. Um, they have one tool that reads this information and maybe displays it or something like that so that you can see like what their alerts are. So they have a tool that, you know, makes those available so you can see what they, the names are, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Um, a lot of uh, streaming tools work that way. Okay. So uh, I have class one here, not too useful. Uh, but what I want to do now is see if I can get a reference uh, to Windows Media Player something or other. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to check is... Um, I'm guessing there's a COM assembly for it. I'm going to avoid it if I can, but I want to see if it's in here first. Windows Media Library Sharing, Windows Media Player. Okay, so there's definitely Windows Media Player stuff in here. Don't know whether or not we're going to use those, um, <laughs> but they're there. Uh, let's take a look real quickly at NuGet, see if there is a Windows Media stuff in here. Uh, don't know if any of that got out here. Okay, nothing found. Um, MP3. Let's see. Uh, simple MP3 decoder. Convert all. Uh, let's see. Media player? Huh. Better view your videos in Android. No. Um, interesting. So there are some things that do it. Um, Potentially. Okay, so I am going to start off with, and see, this is one of the reasons why I like having the multiple infrastructure projects, because uh, if I do grab the com reference, I don't know how nicely that's going to go. Let me go ahead and uh, do a build first, and uh, I'm going to commit this project uh, creation that we did here. Well, I'm going to get rid of class one before we do that. Because who wants to commit class one? Okay. Um, yeah. 
so this is going to be adding general uh, infrastructure project. Um, and actually, I can toss a git shell in front of you guys. Okay. So, see? Git. All right. Um, so I mentioned, let's add this reference, uh, com. Let's go ahead and try it, just see what happens. Again, if this doesn't work out nicely, we can toss it. What is the difference between these build numbers? All right, we'll grab the top one. This number is slightly higher. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if it can do anything with it. Um, okay, so added that in. Um, Let's go ahead and create our class one now. We just got rid of a moment ago. Um, let's take a guess on some using statements, huh? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, looks like that must be the Windows Media Player library from Com. Um, so Windows Media Player, and yes, I am going to start off with WMP lib dot. Actually, that's a good question. Did I have access to that kind of stuff anyway? I don't, I don't assume that I would have, but who knows? Okay, so Windows Media Player class, Windows Media Player interface. Uh, confused here, guys. Uh, so we are running in C sharp in this uh, right here. So uh, full .NET framework. Uh, we're not running .NET Core for this, uh, and the reason for that is that .NET Core generally is uh, just going to be used for uh, console-based application. There is no specific GUI for it. Uh, now we are just doing system tray, but I don't know uh, how we would get our uh, configuration menu that we want to have. So it's good. It's good balance there. So we're just going to do the classic way of doing this. Um, although we should be able to run all our modern C sharp uh, using the latest in the language features. So awesome! Uh, you are a student of C sharp. Uh, it is my favorite language right now. Uh, has been for uh, more than a decade at least. Um, I came from uh, like Python, C++, and the Linux world before that, but um, there are a lot of good languages out there. So, uh, let's see, Windows Media Player. Maybe it has statics? Nope, nothing. Nothing. Doesn't want me to use it. Alright, so... WMP lib, and then we're going to say dot Windows Media Player. I'm going to put that code back in and just see what happens. Wait a minute. Method must have a return type. Oh, pfft. Ah, ah, ah. man, you'd think I was learning C sharp here. That is hilarious. Tell me you've never done that before. I think we've all done that at some point. Uh, we're like, why isn't IntelliSense working for me? Okay, parameterless constructor. Now what are you going to complain about? Uh, cannot be embedded. Use the applicable interface instead. Oh, okay. Alright. So, uh, foo dot... Uh, is it file path? No. Path? 
Nope. Uh, hey, URL. There we go. Okay, so URL, uh, and that is going to be a file path. Uh, since you're learning C Sharp, you might not know what the at sign is at the beginning of that, but this basically tells it um, that my string is going to have uh, some bits in it that I want it to, and, and not not like zeros, ones bits, but like some parts are in the URL uh, are going to be values that I want it to take uh, more literally. So uh, it, it's going to make it so I don't have to escape all my backslashes and everything like that. Uh, play. Play. No. Play. I'm going to figure out what this one is, guys. Close, launch, new media, open player. Huh. Um. Hmm. Place state controls, DVD enabled, network settings, UI mode. Uh, actually, let's take a look at what UI mode is. Alright, you got me guys. MSDN Windows Media Player Control. Uh, what is Media Player Object Model? Okay, Windows Media Player Control into a C Sharp solution. Uh, hang on one sec. Just trying to see. I am going to get rid of my using for a second because I want to take a look at where it's going to put this. So this is Windows Media Player lib dot that. Okay. I just want to pull up the documentation for this thing. I'll toss it on the screen so you can see it also. Uh, let's see. This is creating the control programmatically. Not necessarily what I want to do. I love how this is listed as C++ code and it's Visual Basic, and this one's also listed as C++ code, and it's C Sharp. So that's pretty good. Okay, so grabbing a new player, play state change, media error, and URL, control, ooh, controls.play, is that what it is? Controls, play, hey, there we go. Okay, cool. All right, so that's the one we wanted. Thank you, internet. Um, So, uh, let's call this our audio player class. So we're going to go ahead and rename that to that. Um, let's go ahead and rename file to audio player. Okay. Um, Let's play, do play audio track and we'll pass in the URL actually. So uh, I'm gonna use the URL, the URL. okay. So um, yeah, that's fine. I will lose my blank value. It was just warning me about that. Okay, uh, so what we've got here uh, I pass in, I'm going to pass in the parameter of what URL we want to use for this file uh, only because I just want to wrap this audio player in this because uh, most of this I don't care about really we just want to be able to trigger hey play this file or that file so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this 
Uh, next thing I want to do, I want to get rid of the, um, yeah, switch back to the using. Um, the other thing that I want to do, so I got rid of uh, the type declaration, switched it to a var. Uh, we need to rename this, and this will be media player. So media player .controls .play ought to work. Uh, so now, in order to make this uh, function the way we think it should, I am going to need to grab an audio clip, put this in here, and we'll take a look at it. So I have um, some audio that should work. Um, I could just play our um, the intro music that we have at the beginning of Dev Chatter every time. Uh, I do have the license to run that. Um, unlike uh, the audio that I'm actually planning on using, um, which are just clips. Uh, I don't have specific licensing to use them, but I am just going to play them because they're short little clips, and I think I can get away with fair use of just running uh, random fun clips of stuff on here. Uh, which I should also mention, uh, the music we are listening to is, uh, the background music is from relaxdaily.net, and uh, you will be able to see links to that both down below, uh, as well as at the end of the stream, they will be on the... Uh, stream ending slide. Okay, so... Oh, what a day. What a lovely hey! Day. Welcome, Ace Flame Seer. Thank you for following. Okay. Um, so... Let's, uh, go ahead and... Grab, uh... One of my favorite random internet clips of audio, and we're gonna toss this in the project itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And for now, I am just going to toss the audio file into the debug and release folders. Actually, there's only a debug folder right now, duh. And the reason I'm tossing it in there is um, uh, that I don't really want to commit this and thus I don't want the project to know about it. Uh, so that means it's not going to be a content reference that it's pushing out. The reason I don't want the project to have it is, again, licensing. I don't want to actually put this file in there. So I'm just going to put it in the debug folder for now. And uh, I am betting someone that's in the audience can figure out uh, what this audio clip is before we actually hear it, uh, especially when you see the name. So uh, what I am going to do, we want to call our audio player and run that. Uh, and... What I'm going to do for now is trigger this based on a context menu in here. So eventually we're going to do keyboard shortcuts. For now I'm just going to put a context menu item in here and play the audio based on that. So step one, add a new context menu item. So menu item configure is instead going to be menu item um, play audio. And we're going to call this play audio. So the text of this will be play audio. And then we are going to handle its click button. And we're going to make it the top item on the list. So it's going to be the first one we add to the menu. And actually, to make that a little obvious that this is the order, I'm going to put the menu items in like that. So when I add them, uh, the next thing that I want to do is uh, I'm not going to set a balloon tip. I am instead going to make a new audio player and play it. Now, what I don't know um, is what the deal is with this media player. I'm really afraid of leaving it running. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't I don't know if this thing disposes or what. Well, I can't figure out any way of closing it with that, so I'm going to assume it's not a problem and kill the process at some point if I need to, and I'll look more into it later rather than uh, spending the time on the stream trying to figure that out. Um, so I always run various uh, developer tools that make things a little easier for me. Uh, here I'm running ReSharper, although I'm probably going to look at CodeRush also. I've been running ReSharper for years. I used to run CodeRush a long time ago. Uh, I think it is a total waste for developers to not run some kind of uh, developer productivity tools. Uh, you know, whatever type you like, go ahead and use it. Um, if it 
you know improves your code speeds you up whatever it does whatever you like to do go ahead and do it uh, so the reason I mention that is because uh, you know I believe Visual Studio now has this also but uh, I was able to just add the reference to my infrastructure project directly from this WinForms project without any effort from myself. Okay, so I mentioned that someone in this chat was going to know exactly what my audio clip was uh, as soon as I referenced it by name. Um, okay, um, so no one has any idea what over 9000.mp3 is going to be. Uh, because clearly none of you have ever seen that text before, uh, written or yelled by any characters ever. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I'm actually going to debug it in case we crap out or something. Uh, I'd like to see what happens. So I apologize again, you guys still aren't going to see the contact, the system tray icon. Um, it's over 9,000! Okay, cool. Uh, so I don't know if you guys heard that, but sounds like my audio clip played. Um, hopefully it wasn't super loud. I'll actually pay attention to the audio output while I do it again. It's over 9,000! Yep, yep, that seems to go through. So, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, our audio clip can play, so that's pretty good. Uh, I think that is check-in worthy. So, let's take a look at what we've got. Uh, we definitely want to add in our new audio player class. We want to add in the project for it. Uh, we did adjust that a little bit. And we adjusted that. So those should be our changes. Um, the uh, WinForms project, you'll remember, uh, we made a reference to the infrastructure project. And then the other ones we created. So we created the infrastructure project uh, actually, I should say we added the um, audio player class to the infrastructure project uh, and referenced it in program, and obviously the audio player.cs is a new file. So, uh, this is git commit. Uh, we are adding simple audio player capabilities. So right now, all we have is the ability to just do it from a test. Um, so we can click that, works just fine. Um, all we have is uh, just over 9,000 is the only thing we can play. Uh, but it works. So the next step that we would want to do is be able to do more than one of these. So we, we can go two routes here. We can either set it up so that we can run more than one audio uh, file, which would be a nice way to go. Um, the alt, the Alternately, we could set it up so that we can trigger this based on a keyboard shortcut instead of a context menu. Um, and I could go either one on that, so if someone has a strong preference, let me know. Um, but I think what I want to do is go ahead and trigger based on a keyboard shortcut instead. Although, even on that, we're only going to set up the testing scenario to begin with. So today's really like our getting started on this project. Um, so uh, over the next streams on this, uh, we'll do the actual menu where we set these up and choose the keyboard options that we want to do. Uh, I just don't want to jump too far in one thing. So I want to clear up some of these uh, various things that I've got off screen. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at keyboard shortcuts. Now, I don't know about you, but, um, uh, let's see, system tray keyboard shortcuts. I haven't, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have not done, uh, a system tray application before. Now, I expect that I can make this thing, um, respond to a keyboard shortcut pretty easily. I don't think there'll be a problem. But, I obviously haven't done that yet, so, um, uh, maximizing using, oh, actually that's kind of cool, that's not what we're trying to do, but it is kind of neat. So, maximize a C-sharp application from system tray using a keyboard shortcut. So, that means that it has to be able to, as just a system tray, uh, be still listening to, uh, your keyboard shortcut. 
Okay. Global hotkeys with .NET. Cool. Uh, hotkey dot. Okay, we might take a look at that. Um, user activity hook. I don't have a form. Let's see if we have this. Uh, now again, I don't want to keep tossing things out here. We're just doing, this is just our experimenting phase right now. I don't want anything to actually live out here. Hotkey prefix, huh? Anything interesting in here? Global hotkey, I think that's the one we were looking at. So, let's take a look at that. Global hotkey. So that should be this package. So global hotkey. Um, last updated quite a few years ago. A little over five. Someone's still been modifying it a little bit though. Uh, changed readme. And adding a license. Okay. That hasn't really changed. Which license did they go with? Okay, we're not we're just planning on using it, so that one should permit us to use it. Um That looks pretty easy. Um I think we could get away with using this. Um by the same token though, um I could look at what it's actually using. Let's take a look. So, just grabs the key, key, modifiers, key. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pull it in. I don't know, random code on the internet. What's the worst could happen? Clearly nothing. Nothing will go wrong. <laughs> I was kidding, by the way. Things could go wrong. Uh, let's see. So, um, that's a tough one. For now, I'm going to put it over in the WinForms application, despite the fact that I don't really like tossing a dependency directly in here. Um, I'm still going to do it. <coughs> um. So, global hotkey. There it is. Okay. So now we should be able to build this, and let's go ahead and uh, try using it. So I'm going to add a couple of usings up at the top. And then down here, I'm going to go ahead and create my hotkey manager. So, private static hotkey manager, hotkey manager. And we're going to, uh, whoops, cancel, cancel. We are going to underscore prefix that thing because that's what we do. Okay. So, uh, actually, you know, I'm just going to create it right there. Now, it had in it um, some kind of dispose. There it is. 
Alright. And an unregister. Uh, oh, that's per hotkey. So I'm not going to deal with that. So here's what we're going to do. I just want to wire up this audio track to that one hotkey and that's it. And then remove it from the context menu and the hotkey will be the only way that we do it. So. Again, uh, as I mentioned, this is just for testing. None of this is actually going to live here. Uh, so we have our hotkey. Uh, and that is going to be... Um, underscore hotkey manager dot register and then key dot uh, what key could we bind to this do we have numlock key ah okay so let's do numpad zero so when we press zero on our numpad we're expecting this key to happen um, now we should be able to modify our keys Okay, so this appears like it is probably a bit mask that it's using here. So uh, very likely I can use a bitwise or to allow me to have more than one modifier key. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and say that there isn't one. But I'm betting that I can use a bitwise or uh, which essentially means that each one of those is uh, um, a single bit of a sequence uh, for the values of the enums, the modifier keys. I'm willing to bet that that's how they're set up inside of system windows input. Okay, so uh, this should be registered as a hotkey at this point, but we didn't say what to do when the key is pressed. Uh, let's see. Oh, when when they're pressed. Okay, so underscore hotkey manager dot key pressed. Let's go ahead and create our method for that for now. Again, none of this is going to live here, guys. This is just making sure that these pieces that we're grabbing work. Because uh, as I mentioned, uh, I have not messed with any of this stuff before. We're just trying it out. We're just looking to see, hey, will these tools work in the scenario we're trying to do? Because uh, it'd be a big waste of time if I, you know, built up this giant structure uh, all in wind forms using these, you know, using this stuff. And then we found out, oh, actually the, you know, hotkeys, we're not going to be able to run them from system tray. So that's why I'm just kind of loading this together. We're making sure that both we can play the audio out of there and that the hotkeys work. So this is step one. Uh, so for this, uh, I want to go ahead and say uh, the event args. So... Um, that is annoyingly long, guys. E dot hotkey. Uh, so dot key equals key dot numpad zero. I think is the one that we said. So realistically, we registered these, so I want to actually be able to reference this again later as for the way that we do it. So instead of just calling this hotkey, um, I want to make this thing a field, since we're not using it here. Um, so I want to call this um, numpad zero hotkey. Uh, again, just for now, because uh, that makes it a little easier. So instead of saying that, let's say dot key. Okay, so now now we're matching up. So now we've said, hey, that one's key, that one key, done. Uh, so we're going to check and make sure that these keys match. Okay. Um, so... Um, now that we've got that, uh, I want to do something with it, and I said that my plan was going to be playing the audio track. So I'm going to put this in here. So we should now play that audio track when I press that hotkey, and I'm going to get rid of this menu item. I really don't want to have that menu item anymore, and 
Let's reduce clutter. This code's already a mess. Okay, so let's go ahead and build it again. Uh, I did numpad zero as my hotkey, so let's see what happens. Okay, I have my system tray icon. It, ha it does not have the play audio in it anymore, which means that this is the system tray icon that should have audio. It's over nine. Hey! That's awesome. Perfect. It's so I can now just click thousand. numpad zero. Uh, whenever I click it, it just it's press plays this. And it seems I can play it a few times. So that's kind of fun. Uh, so that seems like the exact kind of scenario that we want to have for our soundboard. Um, so that is fun. I like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit this uh, as adding in the hotkey changes. So, except you guys want to see me commit it. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in. So, yep, packages config because we added in the new package, program.cs. So, let's go ahead and say adding in uh, hotkey sport. Okay. So, uh, we now have the ability to play uh, clips of audio based on hotkeys, and we run only as a system tray icon. And uh, so, it's I can just click this. Thousand whatever I want now. But then when I exit out of the program, now when I click it, it does nothing. So cool. <laughs> we didn't like leave that process running or anything weird like that. Uh, so that is fun. Um, I have various other audio clips that I went and grabbed. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is a clip from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, it's a little ridiculous. Uh, the internet loved it for a little while. It was a bit of a meme. Uh, so. So that worked nicely. Awesome. Go us. That was exciting. Uh, I love that that just ran first try, too. Um, on both of those. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yep, that can be read-only. Uh, Rename to hotkey manager? Oh, I guess it's static. And read-only. That's weird. Okay, anyway. Um, cool. So the next thing that we really need to tackle is getting some kind of a menu uh, based on, so we have our context menu in our system tray, which I need to figure out a nice way for you guys to see the system tray, but also still have like a full screen, <clears throat> you know, no uh, extra anything on their uh, view so that you can actually see Visual Studio nicely, uh, but still have the ability to see the system tray. So it could be that I need to run my taskbar all the way across. Maybe we can still get system tray on that one. Um, we'll see. Um, it also is possible that I could give you a cropped view uh, down in the corner just of my system tray <coughs> as an alternate piece somewhere on here. Um, I might mess with OBS so that uh, we have a separate coding window for that. Uh, there is an easy answer to that uh, Ace Flames here, uh, and that would be uh, probably Vegeta is my favorite character because he's the most fun. He's a little ridiculous, um, but I would I, I certainly wouldn't root for him most of the time, uh, not being a good guy and all. Um, uh, Dende is really nice. Uh, he, he's a good guy, uh, and I've probably laughed at King Kai more than uh, anybody else. Uh, but clearly, the best thing uh, I don't. Won't be able to remember their names, but the uh, bit of censorship in Dragon Ball Z, for those of you that don't know, uh, one of the characters dies and goes to heaven-ish. Uh, and uh, in the U.S. release, they didn't want to have... So when he then, you know, fell from... While in heaven, uh, he falls down into hell. But in the U.S., they didn't want to have that written anywhere, so they changed H-E double hockey sticks to... Uh, they just whited out some of the letters at some points, so they made it H-I-F-L? Or no, H-F-I-L. So it's the Hall for Infinite Losers. It's uh, probably one of the most ridiculous pieces of censorship that has ever been done anywhere. Um, so, 
All right, so let's figure this out. Uh, not planning on uh, streaming too much longer today, but I do want to figure out how to get our configure menu. Um, so system tray context menu dialog uh, configure. Uh, let's see. So I am hoping that uh, the internet can help me figure this one out because I actually don't know what we can trigger. I mean, I can look at some of the bits that we can pull up here and I could dig into it, but I'm sure there's a nice way to do it. So here's the thing. We, we have these context menus. I want, I want one, this configure one, to be able to get me something. So right now, um, when we click on this, we're just popping up a balloon. Um, but I actually want to open up a window for um, actually making these modifications. And that is a little more complicated. So, uh, now some ways that we could do it are, um, we could do a couple of simple things first off. Uh, we could just generate this menu based on what they put in a folder. <clears throat> so we could make it so that when you, when you do this program, when you run our soundboard, uh, there's just an audio clips folder. You just put them in there in the order that you want them. And we just, you know, assign, say, you know, numpad controls. Uh, and then probably we don't want them always using numpad. Maybe they want to click some kind of button. So maybe we give them the option of, you know, control, alt, and whatever uh, other modifier keys they want. Because uh, we can do checkboxes on our context menu pretty easily. So we could just give them that. Uh, alternately, uh, we could make like a full, uh, like nested menu of those audio clips as well. If we really wanted this to be lightweight and give no dialogue boxes, but I, it just doesn't seem nice to me. I think it's going to be nicer if we can set it up so that there is uh, a window that pops up that has um, just a list of the audio clips that they want to run and what keyboard shortcut they want for each one. Uh, I think that's the route we're going to go. Um, but since I'm not actually sure how to pop up the form that we haven't even started running yet uh, from inside that context menu. I think I want to figure that one out off stream. Uh, that way I don't uh, burden you guys with that too much. Um, so we might wrap up here. Uh, I was only going to go for maybe another 15 minutes anyway. Uh, however, um, I guess I can use this time for a couple of things. <coughs> So I'd mentioned to you guys that I made some changes uh, in the other project that we're working on. Uh, so that would be the dev chatter bot. And I am going to pull that up over here on GitHub, let you guys take a look at it. Um, so uh, let's see, did I send a pull request? Did I merge it in? What did I do? I did not send a pull request, I don't think, yet. No, I didn't. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and send in our... I'll create our pull request real quickly, and then we can... Just so we can take a look at what this is. Um, so... Twitch lib... Uh, let's just say adding Twitch connection. So, we added a basic Twitch connection to our project and since this is just me sending this to me I'm not going to put in a huge description because uh, there is not yet any other um, person in the community who is going to review this pull request uh, so the things that we changed uh, that I put in here let's take a look at the most recent commits uh, they would be adding JSON config and extracting the bot code and separating the connection okay so adding the JSON config uh, so um, earlier in the week uh, let's see, that would have been Thursday. Uh, we were messing around with our configuration and it was getting stupid. And uh, I wasted maybe like five, 10 minutes just trying to get configuration working right. Uh, Cause I don't know about most of you guys, but most of the .NET Core that I do is uh, primarily ASP.NET Core, not uh, 
console applications and our bot is actually right now just a console application that's running. So for our uh, connection to Twitch, uh, we need to use OAuth, uh, we need to use a username, an OAuth token, and a channel to tell it which one we're going to connect to. Now I wanted these to be just settings, so I've added them in here. The other thing that I did is I made it so that inside of our program.cs file, inside of the main, uh, we now set up, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, here is our builder. So we do initialize configuration, and then down here, we go ahead and say, um, we use a configuration builder, which is a .NET Core thing, uh, and we tell it, hey, add this, this is one of our configuration files. Uh, so we tell it app settings.json has some of, the, some of our configuration in it. And then the next thing is we build it. So that gets us our iConfiguration root uh, object. And that uh, from that, we then are able to access uh, whatever values uh, we put in here. So for now, we only added a JSON file, but we could have added multiple JSON files, or we could have also added references to environment variables. It's really up to us what we want to put into our configuration for our application. Uh, so essentially, uh, what that lets us do <clears throat> is access this data. So you'll see at the bottom here, we have our app settings JSON uh, data. And in this, you'll see that we have, uh, I named it Twitch Client Settings, and inside of this, it is a JSON object that includes username, OAuth, and channel. You might remember those from such classes as this Twitch Client Settings, which has a username, OAuth, and channel that match exactly with what those are. Now, because I match those exactly, uh, what that does for us is inside of our configuration, I can tell it, hey, grab this section and get these. So I told it to get the section that has the same name as that class. Uh, I used the name of property, which I believe is a C-sharp 6 uh, edition, and that gives us this as a string. Now, the reason I like that is that it is compile time safe. Uh, so now I will need to update the configuration uh, if I do ever change this class. However, uh, I like the fact that uh, I know that I can rely on these always matching, that this is going to have to match. And because uh, we'll attempt to get this, it's going to fail almost immediately if someone doesn't have that configuration. Uh, now I didn't make it super nice with like any error messages or anything like that, but hey, we haven't actually built the piece that gives you the diagnostic information. There's no logging, nothing like that yet, so I didn't really worry too much about it. Uh, you'll notice our logging right now is just console.writeline. Uh, now we are going to extract that out, make it a little nicer later, but it works for now. So the cool thing about get and passing in the type is that it's just going to wire everything up just based on matching the string names here and it'll work nicely. Uh, automatically uh, binding those values and hydrating the object. So the reason why, so I wanted to mention why it didn't work when I tried to do almost this exact thing uh, on Thursday. And the reason why is because occasionally I'm an idiot and I forget to do simple little things like uh, adding in this using statement. So Microsoft Extensions Configuration is what makes it so that this get actually appears here. And so I was thinking, like, I'm like, I know there was a command that's, like, right off of this object. It just, you know, pulls these values. And I was looking for it. I was like, is it, like, hydrate? Is it get? Is it bind? Is it get? You know, and I'm trying all these things. None of them working. And uh, I'm like, all right, screw it. You know what, guys? I'm just going to hard code these, and we're just going to move on. So I just hard coded them in there. We continued on. Uh, but now I do actually have it extracted out. Uh, so that is a little nicer now. Uh, and the reason that that's not on there is because uh, that came in in another commit that was the same piece. Uh, I just separated them out for that. So you'll notice one of the other commits in this pull request is adding in that extension. So uh, those extension methods ought to work. Should be nice. So that is what we have for our Twitch uh, bot today. Uh, we will be continuing on with these two projects later this week. Um, I'm going to take one of our... Uh, I haven't decided yet. Um, either Monday or Tuesday, we're not going to have our scheduled stream. Uh, when I figure out which one, I will probably mention that on Twitter. 
So uh, if you haven't yet, uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, my name on there is Brendonius. Uh, that's, you know, I don't know, not, not the easiest thing to spell. Uh, but uh, I think I've got it linked down below in the information section. So go ahead and take a look down there if you're running on the website. Uh, if you're running in one of the apps, you know, you might have to head to the info tab, uh, which there is one of those as well. Um, <clears throat> additionally, uh, make sure you go ahead and click the uh, follow button on Twitch, uh, as that helps me out quite a lot, because uh, I need to make sure that I've got some followers so that you guys can come hang out and chat with me. Um, you'll get notifications whenever you click that follow button. Uh, you can make sure that it has notifications so you will get an alert whenever I go live. Uh, those are the only alerts that you get are when I start. So um, that does not mean that I'm like sending you emails and messages and whatnot. All that does is make it so that when I start streaming, you get a notification. You can show up. You don't have to. Uh, but you can if you want to hang out and see some C-sharp code. And uh, we will be back probably Monday or Tuesday. Don't know which day. Uh, but then again on Thursday... So our current schedule is four days a week, and I hope you all had fun, have a great time coding, and I will catch you then. Bye, everyone.